Hello there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to interpret graphs. Here we see the graph of a quadratic function. The function is f of x equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2. And I haven't labelled any of the points on it, but if I did, say for example, this point here, is we go across 4 and up 6. So 4 and 6, and that is because if we get f of 4, we get 4 squared minus 3 times 4 plus 2, which is equal to 16 minus 12 plus 2, and 16 and 2 is 18, take away 12 is 6. So we see that when 4 is substituted in to our function, the output is 6. So we can say that, in summary, f of 4 is equal to 6. Now, what are the kinds of questions which you might be asked in an exam? Well, here's a typical question that you might be asked. Solve f of x equal to 0. Now we saw that when we substituted 4 in we got 6 out. So what we're looking for here is what value of x do we substitute in to give us 0 as our output. Now our outputs are on this y-axis so where is y 0? It's down here. Okay, so where does the function cross the x-axis is another way of asking solve f of x equal to 0. So in brackets I could say where does function cross x-axis. Let's just think about this again for one moment. f of x is the y-axis. Okay, so the y-axis is the same as the f of x-axis and then we have the x-axis. So where is that 0? It's 0 down here. And where is the function f of x equal to 0? Means where does this function, this function is in green is f of x. For what values of x do we substitute in to give us 0? Well clearly it's these two values here. So when the answer is when x is equal to 1 or 2. Now another typical question that you might be asked is perhaps find the value of f of x when x is equal to 3.5. Now this just means subbing in 3.5 into our function. But if we were asked to uh, use the graph to find the value, well then we go up from 3.5, we go up to our graph and across and we see that we get 4. So the answer is 4, and you can show that on your graph. You can have an arrow like that. We might also be asked to find, find the values of x for which f of x is equal to, let's say, 3. Now, we saw earlier on when f of x equal to 0 was when the y-coordinate is 0. So when f of x is equal to 3, it's when the y-coordinate is 3. Well, that's here. So let's do this in pink. We go across. So here and here, in fact, there are two places where 
the y coordinate is 3 and they give us this value here which I have to estimate from the graph so that on the left here is about minus 0 0.3 perhaps and over here we have 3.3 .3. so I, hopefully you can see that clearly enough <coughs> So these are, let's say, three different types of questions that you might be asked. There's one, there's two, and there's three. The first one, solve f of x equal to zero, is find where the function crosses the x-axis. The second one, find the value of f of x when x is equal to 3.5. So you go to 3.5, which is here and we go up to meet the graph and across and we find that the value of f of x is 4 so the answer is 4 and the last one was find the values of x for which f of x equal to 3 well f of x is equal to 3 here so we where does that meet the graph go across and down and we see that if we substitute it in minus 0 0.3 we would get 3 as our y coordinate and if we substituted in 3.3 .3, we would also get 3 as our y coordinate let's look at another example here I have the graph of two functions in red I have a quadratic function and in green I have a linear function you can always tell a quadratic function by the shape of it it's shaped like a curve like a parabola and the highest power of x is 2 in the function whereas the green function which I've labeled g of x the highest power of x is 1 so we don't even need to put in a 1 and it's a straight line which is why it's a linear function now something that you might be asked is solve f of x is equal to g of x which means find the x coordinates where these two graphs intersect I find intersection and clearly that is when x is 1 here and here when x is 5 so our answer is when x is 1 and x is equal to 5 those are our two points of intersection so there you go thanks for watching this video I hope you'll join us for the next one.